at your instep is brought to you by Comic Town and BCW Supplies. Hello, and welcome to Matt Your End Step. My name is Morgan, and I'm here with Mike. Hello. <laughs> and, and Dave. Hi. Mike, Mike trying to get you with that Doppler effect over there. <laughs> like he was an ambulance. Um, we have another fun-filled episode for you folks hello, this hello, week. Hello. And uh, we, we actually had a little bit of a, a mini-announcement uh, from Wizards, so we're going to talk about some of the cool stuff that they announced in the community, and um, really that's going to pretty much cover most of it. And then uh, after that, uh, we are going to move, uh, shift over to our competitive talk, talk a little bit about the GP and the Open uh, that happened over the weekend. But uh, talk minimally about that, realistically, because it, it is modern uh, and some of the information is still somewhat important. But there are uh, two big missing components uh, in, the, in the overall metagame that uh, are rather, you know, change things somewhat. Um, so the results are, you know, take what you can, they have an asterisk, uh, you know, with them. It's not a complete, uh, you know, modern set as it were. We'll say it didn't really take away from the, uh, attendance. No, or the or, viewer, or, or the, the viewership. viewership. Yeah. So. People like, like watching modern. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, uh, kind of interesting to see that, uh, you know, portion of it. But, uh, let's jump right into, uh, uh our community segment. So, uh, we had a, uh, 2018 product announcement, and this was sort of uh, uh, smaller than, you know, what, announcement day or whatever they call it. It's the announcement of the announcements. Yeah. Right? Um, I don't know why they do this, but sure. <laughs> uh, ba- basically, it's, I imagine that there are, like, things that are hitting, like, retailers, like, SKUs or something like that, that could potentially, like, give away what's coming down the pipeline, so they want to get ahead of it instead of being behind the curve when rumors or scuttlebutt happen with upcoming products um and we've kind of seen this with like some uh trademarks they've registered where there's these registered trademarks but we aren't sure what they're for uh so it just leads to speculation while if any of this stuff got leaked out or anything like that as far as like names are concerned then we already know what it, what it is didn't this stuff like leak on their like German site or something? I think initially then it, it like, went up oh, early, now we have and to then release it. right. So <laughs> uh, now who, I don't know, you know, what the correct date that was supposed to come out necessarily, but I, none of this stuff is, I don't know, super uh, impactful necessarily. It's all supplemental stuff for the most part. I mean, completely, it's all supplemental stuff. None of this is mainline like Magic Gathering going into standard or anything like that. Um, uh, so the uh, the first thing that kind of kicked off the announcement was a an app. They're going to be developing an app. It's the uh, Magic the Gathering Portal companion app. No relation to the you know the Valve game or anything like that. Oh, this is like this is like Portal Third Age. Uh, third, third Kingdom already came out. This would be the Fourth Dimension. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well done. Yeah. Um, so uh, um, this is going to be something that I assume is a life tracker, but also add some interesting stuff. You can do personal tournaments through this and keep uh, score, basically, keep record. Yeah, so it says the things you can do with it are create, manage, and track home tournaments, uh, complete with pairings, invitations for friends, brackets, playgroup stats. I'm kind of interested in that for oh, possibly yeah. cube group this is like statistics. A, uh, I mean, sweet. I don't know if there's any apps that already exist that are like this, but this is yeah. a, a dream for the person who has a cube group that gets together regular, regularly or even like a kitchen table group or a uh, commander group and they want to be able to like actually like have something that prepares a tournament for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then it has kind of the other stuff you would expect looking up card information Life totals, uh, stay up to date on Magic News. Uh, so keep in touch with your playgroup through social linking, and learn more about Magic. Social so, linking. Social linking. Social social linking. Yep. You have run a home tournament. Would you like to tweet about this? No, stop asking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it seems like this is like way overdue, right? Like they should have had this <laughs> like years there ago. Probably was an app for a little bit of uh, some persuasion. What, an yes. official Magic app. Yeah. Yes, there okay. was. Okay. It, it was, was a life counter. Yeah, it was a life counter. And, and it's that's, defunct. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's overdue, but it's not surprising that Wizards is behind on, on this, to be perfectly honest. 
Um, but it's cool, and I hope it's. I want it to be good. It sounds like it's going to be good, and if that whole home tournament thing, like I think that's the real appealing factor of it. And if that is like functional, uh, I think this will be popular with a lot of a lot of people. Absolutely, I, I'd definitely be interested in keeping like cube group stats. So exactly, I, I, I like, want to see. Cool. I want to learn more about that. I want to know how bad I always lose in cube. It's very important to me. <laughs> I had a feeling, but now I want it to be verifiable. Yeah, I want data uh, about how sucky <laughs> I am. Uh, so after that, we got a replacement product from the From the Vault series. It's called Signature Spellbook. And the first one is Jace. And uh, this is going to be a uh, package with a Jace Planeswalker card and, what, seven or eight iconic spells that tie in with Jace? Yes. Um, so they could be named spells. They could just be like spells that have had like prominent Jace art maybe, or right. did they kind of give any inclination of what they are? Not r- really. It's like implied like flavor perspective. It's like, these are the spells in his arsenal. And it's like, yeah, we get it. But like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what they're expect- intending the value to be. Cause like, I think it's only one card is foil, right? Like only one card is foil and the rest might be all art. But like, mm-hmm. um, so I don't know if they're going to go the route where it's like, yeah, here's like the counter spell that had Jace on it from the Jace Ch- you know, Chandra dual deck. Or if it's going to be like, uh, here's a special premium brainstorm because Jace, let's be honest, he likes to cast brainstorm. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen Jace Mind Sculptor. Or the focus isn't actually on the spells, it's the focus is on the planeswalker. So maybe it's, uh, my, my thought was if it's seven cards plus the one, then like the one might just be like Jace the Mind Sculptor and then like a bunch of like, bad cards there'll be a way for them to print more jaces <laughs> yeah but this is 20 bucks msrp so they can charge whatever they want for a jason I, sculpture. they could but i don't think they'll do that i, I mean, think i 100 percent think they should i mean mox diamond is like a hundred and some dollar card now and it was 34.99 msrp and it said but it wasn't at that time i mean it was still a mox like the you know i, I i'm just saying like suggesting that they wouldn't just do that like i think it'd be very refreshing if they just did it yeah i think they 100% I mean, should I wouldn't care if they did. I mean, that, that'd be cool. It'd be a way to get them out there, but I, I don't uh, think they're going to. I think Especially for, so close to Masters 25. It's like... Yeah. If you're trying to, like, draw up interest for Masters 25, and then you just reprint it again, it's like... That's eh. perfectly fine. Yeah. It, okay, it's our, it's, right now, it's, it's the most expensive card in Modern. And we'll could, if, it, if it, you know, proves to be... Uh, as many people are already assuming, like, format defining, it, it's not going to go down. Like... We already saw this Harbor like Modern Masters twenty five will will not Modern Masters twenty five, but Magic you know twenty five will will come out. Now it will be printed more than you know the initial printings of like Modern Masters when they first came out, so that that will affect the the price. But I think demand is still going to be high enough that it's still going to be you know, above a hundred dollar card um, for uh, for the most part. And it, I, I think that um, if they did if the I mean, if they're gonna put a J I don't know if they're gonna put a Jace in like this premium product like put the best Jace in there I don't know <laughs> like to, to be perfectly Jace honest Guild Pack is the joke that's already made like <laughs> no, yeah, of okay, course cool. you I got mean, white glove Jace uh, the the other one is that they could obviously do is Jace Bellerin like uh, yeah that yeah makes Jace Bellerin or Jason incriminating haircut <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I think like if if you want like the signature spell book to like even like matter then could be the excellent Jace no oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh it, you, you you make it make it jace the mind sculptor like just do it just yeah, again and that's if they do not expect it, it yeah, might not do have not expect it to have it's not gonna have jace oh no i don't i'm just gonna tell you right now it's not gonna have jace the mind sculptor oh you know the future, nor do huh? it nor do i think that that's a good idea the guy who last week said i wasn't anticipating this unbanning tells you yeah you know, he knows the future yeah Weird. i i know this much <laughs> I'm not going to put it in. His, in, in I, his. you know what it, it's definitely like not likely at this point in time but i feel like um if I feel like if with, if Watsy is going to be like Jason's legal and modern and, and and cause more demand and like print it as a mythic rare in a you know MSRP ten dollar per pack set, then they got to do something else for this card because it it's not like it's going to be a, a lo- below a hundred dollars. <laughs> like in 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 my eyes, I just don't see that happening. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it's but fine. I, I agree with Dave that probably won't be in it, but it was and a thought, a dream. It should be. William I think Burr. it should be. Jace was already in uh, from the vaults. Yeah, do it again. <laughs> you go. All right, back check. Right. Wait, what, what else we got coming? Out? Uh, so the other thing we have is Battle Bond, uh, which is a 
card set. It is Soul Bond, <laughs> which is the the twenty fourth James Bond movie. <laughs> yeah, Battle yeah. Battle Bond. <laughs> um, this is going to be a two headed giant draft focus, a uh, draft unlimited. Uh, I should say just limited focus set. The uh, sort of in the vein of like conspiracy, uh, replacing it for uh, you know twenty eighteen. And uh, as someone who enjoys two headed limited events, two a giant limited events of draft and lim- uh, sealed persuasion, uh, I think this could this could be pretty cool. Yeah, I think you know they said they already experimented. We had we had was Oath of the Gate Watch that had some cards that actually cared about you know having a, a teammate. Um, but I think there's a lot of cool like space in this, and I think that like I, I know that I've got on here, and I know Morgan has too. But talk to you about how like two at a giant draft, like that format, which is like two at a giant draft, is a blast. So a set that's like, hey, you pretty much have to do this, makes me kind of happy. So oh yeah. Um, also, Gavin, uh, very very. Yeah, yeah. Uh, said that they're really looking at this as a way to uh, bring some cards into uh, cubes and free yes. DH, which in my mind also screams popper. <laughs> so uh, it'll be interesting set to, to watch for. Oh, oh, for sure. Um, and it's interesting that they are looking at the when they're making cards for this. They are also looking at you know those other formats that can actually get cards from the set. When, right. when designing so i i don't know like how much uh, obviously like it's designed to be played to a giant so i don't know how much that'll affect the cards necessarily so uh, i i guess we'll just kind of have to to wait and see but uh, i'm it sounds like a, a pretty cool like uh setting uh, they they gave us a little bit a bit of a background about where the plane is going to be it's going to be a plane that we've never visited before it's going to be like gladiatorial themed in, in, in some persuasion uh, so it wasn't like pure gladiatorial though like it's like you fight these, these in this combat, but like you score as many points for like winning as you do for like doing it in a cool, flashy way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like a like a runway murder. Yeah, yeah. Which I think is probably an episode theme of America's Next Top Model. Well, it's uh, America's Next Top Russell Crowe Gladiator. <laughs> Can we also play America's Next Next Joaquin Phoenix then? <laughs> well, no, it's not America's Next Top. Kind of a jerk leader. <laughs> Uh, oh, Dave doesn't like it when you make fun of Joaquin Phoenix. No, he seems very serious right now. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to look something up. So. His pictures of Joaquin Phoenix, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Is it with or without the cool beard? It's definitely with. It's definitely uh, post beard Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> Big bushy beard. <laughs> Big bushy beard. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is this is gonna be cool. It's gonna be coming out in uh, June. Uh, so June eighth. I so. don't know if all of these things are coming out in June minus one. Okay, I guess that's true. <laughs> June's going to be a busy Magic month, I guess. Uh, then we also have some Commander products. So we have the Commander Anthology Volume Two. Um, uh, so you're going to get four and more, um, you know, Commander decks that have come out previously uh, in a in a single box, so you can buy them and jam with your your friends. Um, and then we have Commander 2018, uh, which is going to be, um, you know returning once more uh, i do believe in the uh, announcement that they did mention planeswalkers uh so, so more like the tafiri cycle potentially that we or there could be rules changes coming to commander that will affect your availability to play your planeswalkers as your commanders which is something that ha- people in that people that like commander have have been wanting so it, maybe that i I I don't know I I kind of can't believe there's another commander set this year. Like I guess I guess they must sell that well, but it's just do. like man, that year seems like you're going back to that well a lot, I, I really mean, quickly every year. So yeah, it's just like I don't know. I guess I, I'm, I'm glad you're you're happy about it if you are. I mean, if not, I'll continue to be ambivalent about it. But people people like it. People like it and they buy it. Do and... you like it? I don't really care. And I was asking about Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Dave has gotten to try some pretty broken cube cards due to Commander. So, yeah, they're not really made for uh, for one on one battles. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Definitely, sorry. like some of the uncommons are a little bit too good. But yeah, a uh, little, little, little busted. Maybe we'll get uh, more Ash Barons. I mean, hey, maybe. <laughs> yeah, just keep repeating that, that card because that, that just keeps going. That's up. probably likely to to be honest. I, I bet that's going to show up like Battle Bond. Yeah, like I was about to say, either in Battle Bond or in, put in, in Commander. Like every set, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like it's, it's like, the new evolving wild. It's the commander like land that lets you add mana, right? It, don't they put that one on like every command tower? Or? Command tower. Yeah, do that. Or, or do you mean Opal Palace? Because <laughs> that one was a lot less good. Yeah, that was, that was no bueno. Um, we also have a kind of a weird product that's going to be releasing, um, and it, it is um, Chinese market specific. 
uh, it is going to be released in other territories, uh, but it's Chinese planeswalker decks that are based on uh, the lore of the, co- of, of the country. Uh, so they're going to have planeswalker cards that are specifically pulled from like their their lore in their country, which is really interesting. Yeah, I I, I mean, so you know, if you are if you're in this country, and you're like, well, just remember, like. Like China's huge, and they're coming at us economy wise. So it makes total sense for you know if if the brand is that powerful and popular there, that's a way that you sort of see it in. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's also not unheard of for them to take another culture and like design a set for that culture. We already mentioned Portal Three Kingdoms, right. which is the you know uh, the romance of the Three Kingdoms is what all those cards are based <laughs> right. off of. So I think this is kind of interesting, and that we also had something similar before uh, with uh, the the with the Japanese Jason Chandra decks, right? Yeah, where they so, had different art yes. uh, for the Planeswalker cards at the very least. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what what it means designed for it, and like, does that mean it will be an existing Planeswalker like fitted for that, or is it going to be a custom Planeswalker? Well, probably a custom Planeswalker, with, with especially you know designed art and everything like that. But I mean, we'll be able to see what it is. They, like I said, they they said that it, it is designed specifically for the Chinese uh, market, but will be available in other territories as far sure, as I sure. know. So uh, it could be pretty interesting. The last thing that we want to talk about is uh, Toy Fair. So Toy Fair, Toy Fair, Toy Fair uh, happened over the weekend, and uh, you know, obviously, you know, Hasbro being the owner of Wizards of the Coast means that they they, they brought their children along uh, to to show off some of their uh, uh, cool toys um, that are going to be happening. And some of this is packaging for both Dominaria and Corset 2019. Uh, you know, uh, kind of you know, leading us into what you know we could we could be seeing. Um, obviously, the packaging art obviously uh, has pictures uh, from cards that are going to be in the set, and um, yeah, we we got some interesting tidbits. Uh, I don't know how deep you guys want to go uh, into this. If we're afraid of like spoilers or anything like that, uh, I mean, I, I mean, spoilers for what? I guess I, I, we should talk, we should mention Teferi because you pointed this out to me. Yeah, so Teferi is on a Planeswalker deck for the the set inferring that he is a planeswalker <laughs> yeah and if you're like duh i know he is i saw it in the commander set well yeah that's technically back in time right yeah. like teferi gave it's up his weird time things going yeah on with dominaria. teferi gave up his spark to close one of the time bubbles in, in dominaria back in the you have know, um time spiral block so um ostensibly he shouldn't be a planeswalker but if he's on the planeswalker deck then he must be getting a spark back somehow right so and it'd be interesting to see how he did that because like we know that like the planeswalker spark is like a really weird thing like karn has a planeswalker spark because venser put his human heart inside of him so i don't really know how this works so like, i don't know if like tafiri is just like you uh I smell a little spark on you can i uh <laughs> can i chat down on that heart can i just no, you're still using well, it? Still using well, didn't um, Obnixilis lose his spark and then got it back? He used uh, a ritual with the Eldrazi to, like... Well, he used, he harnessed the power of the ley lines of the Zendikar. Ley lines, that's what it was, yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm just saying, so there's, like, precedence there for, like, Sure, and, like, we, ju- we just that. came from a plane where, like, um, you know, where uh, Azor had channeled his um, his spark into, like, a magical object, and ostensibly it could find a way to... You know, he didn't, but could have found a way to channel it back out of said magical object. So, um, I guess it's whatever the nature of the Planeswalker Spark is. But, so, but so we don't have any set rules for how this really works. It's kind of like no, whatever. No, it's kind of play it by ear. Yeah, yeah. It, okay. it, it, it seems that they're implying that if you you don't lose it forever necessarily. You, I mean, you can like get it back. That definitely wasn't true before because like, well, you would like retcons are a thing. Sure, but like now, like they age it, they should age. I don't know. I, I, whatever, I'm cool. I'm I'm fine with Fairy being plants longer. Uh, and I think the other one, uh, it, it for specifically Dominaria was um, what Karn? No, no, no. Uh, in the uh, In the actual Planeswalker deck packaging, I think it's Chandra. Chandra's the other one that's on the packaging. Gotcha. Um, so leading us to believe that Chandra might be uh, showing up on Dominaria. I mean, technically, as so it, the Gate Watch is there. Yes, we, we know that the Gate Watch is there. Almost, all, we know that at least three or four members of the Gate Watch are there. Right. So, but being that of, uh, uh, we might be getting a theoretically could be getting a, a Planeswalker card. See, it's interesting because we only have one set now. Right. And so you're gonna get more walkers in that set. 
Yes. So the, we could have a pretty expansive roster of walkers. I wonder if they go back to cycles then, like what, cycles of walkers. Like they used Maybe, to do. like a whole, a whole five set? Yeah, it's possible. I mean, we're going back to a core set, and core sets you know, historically Typically have did five. do that. So. And speaking of the core set, um, we do have some planeswalker deck pack- packaging for that, and it's Nicobolus and Tezzeret. Uh, yeah, so I think it should be pointed out uh, that when they had Origins, they uh, before before it was decided that Magic Origins was going to be the last corset, uh, it was pretty openly talked about by a bunch of the designers that they had designed it to be a villains featured set. Uh, and then they got told that, like, no, we're going to go this direction, and they had to scrap that. Uh, and then they went to Origins and did the Planeswalkers, you know, the Flip Planeswalkers. Um, so it would not surprise me at all that, like, the way that, one, we know how the story's gone, but, like, when they brought the corset back, they were like, so can we just bring this villain theme back? Because Bolas is also featured very prominently on yes. all of the, the packaging. Um, and and they, they, I think they went and said that it's not, like... All, it's not like origins for villains, but it's definitely like villains are heavily featured. Yes, so are, I, I are think featured that, I think that's highlighted. Cool. And when they say that, like, I wonder what else that means because, like, we know Tezzeret, and we know Bolas, but does that mean like, like, are we going to see Praetors, right, or at least references to them? Because those are like those are the other major villains we kind of have. Um, I, are they going to go far enough back, depending on what you're reprinting, that you're going to see? Re- yeah. Like, you know, what I mean? like Urborg was in was it wasn't the last quarter. It wasn't Origins. It was fifth fourteen. Uh, yeah, and fifteen. Fifteen. Right. Like that's a reference to like an old villain. Like mm-hmm. that's kind of interesting. Sure. And um, we did get the uh, booster pack packaging for Dominaria. Has some fan favorites on it. We got uh, the Bird Wizard. Uh, <laughs> some kind of bird man. <laughs> so I was trying to, I was trying desperately to come up with a name for that too. Uh, Commander Isha. That's it. It's going to be Commander Isha. Called it. Oh, okay. That's a bird, for, a legendary bird from Judgment. Oh, fair or, enough. Uh, what was the other one? Tar- tarot? Oh, from Invasion? Yeah, no, no. Tarot is from G- Torment. If I remember I correctly. Know. I don't know. Cool. I was tar- thinking of, uh, Ka- Kan- I was thinking also. of Kanji Airy Keeper, but that's probably <laughs> not it. That wasn't a very popular uh, um, card. Rook Egg. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of bird man. Uh, we got we got Karn with a cool book. Yeah, maybe Vencer's Journal. Could be the, Vencer's is Journal. Is the, 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 the thought that I've heard. Uh, we have uh, Teferi uh, in the same art as on the Planeswalker deck as that's well, which is, which is weird. Um, and then... We got Jaya. We got Jaya Ballard. Uh, which, depending on the quality of the picture you look at, looks like Jaya Ballard has a beard. Uh, but uh, oh, Jaya, Jaya Beard. Uh, upon further, you know, better quality analysis, it is uh, just how her, her hair and her hood and everything is. But that that's definitely Jaya Ballard. Kind of kind of looking like uh, all the uh, like Oath cards a little bit, looking at that art. Oath of Jaya, destroy all blue permanents. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, probably Dis- not. That's probably your hand you know speculation. <laughs> but it, it's definitely a, a Jai Ballard focus card. So it could be something. Could be a, a Planeswalker card, maybe. If there's blue permanence in the multiverse, yeah, I'll keep watch. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, some some cool art, some cool things happening. Um, the, with the tagline, you know, gather legends. I, I think that this could be potentially a pretty heavily like Planeswalker focus set. Um, from you know what we're even seeing on the on this uh, on this art and what we're seeing from the Planeswalker decks, like I, I don't know. I think it, I do definitely think it's weird that the uh, the art on the booster pack is the same on the Planeswalker deck because I think it's like one of the f- first times that we've seen that. Maybe I'd have yeah. to look at all the other ones, of course, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, so we kind of have to see what comes of it, but. I don't know. Uh, packaging is like so cool. I, I just like it, and I like to see like what what's what, and you know. Also, Dominaria, is it the first set that has, like, the new font for magic? The symbol font, you mean? Like, the what the word magic. The, the new logo. Yeah, yeah the, the new, new logo. logo. Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, from the looks of it, yes, it is. Um, but until this comes out, we're just going to gonna have to wait. I think, uh, what, next week or the week after we start 25 spoilers? <laughs> yeah. It'll tide me over, but I need I need that Dominaria. Dominaria is just so exciting. We've already like talked to death about Dominaria, but it I think is... Dominaria is even more exciting. Just how disappointing Ixalan was. So it's just like, <laughs> yeah, please it better be good. <laughs> yeah, I hope I hope so. Uh, also, don't make Karn too good because I don't I don't want Tron to get banned. It's already like we'll talk about the. the... I don't think Tron needs any help. Yeah, getting banned. I know. Stop it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, people already hate that deck. I know. For the most part. I get it. I understand. I think people hate Tron more than Lantern. Uh, yeah. There's been polls. 
It's been it, it has been established. Yeah, science. <laughs> Internet polls, those are, you know. <laughs> Internet science. They're so easy. So before we jump into our competitive segment, we do want to give a shout out, of course, to one of our lovely sponsors, Comic Town. Uh, on March 3rd, I believe, they're actually going to be having their standard uh, PPTQ. Uh, so if you're still trying to qualify for the uh, RPTQ uh, for Magic, uh, the, the special uh, Magic 25 uh, Pro Tour, trying to get a team together, assembled, to uh, take that down, uh, come to Comic Town on March 3rd to uh, check out that PPTQ. You can find out more information on their um, Facebook page by doing a quick search for Comic Town Gaming Center. So, competitive. Uh, we had a GP in Lyon. It was modern, and it was won by uh, what? Grigor Grigor's uh, Kowalski. Yeah. Um, playing red green Eldrazi, and this is kind of a, a new kid on the block. And um, obviously, you know, we didn't have Bloodbraid Elf, and we didn't have Jace legal um, for this tournament, and um, that obviously changes kind of you know some of the, some of the deck lists and some of the decks. This one is kind of one of those because, you know, it's red-green. Uh, you're probably going to be going forward playing some number of uh, Bloodbraid Elves uh, in this list. And even today, uh, Gabby Swartz was actually streaming um, earlier and was was definitely playing uh, this deck with four Bloodbraid Elves in it. So, um, But this deck is really cool. It is similar to, if you remember, during Eldrazi Winter, uh, one of the later evolutions of that deck uh, was a red-green um, Eldrazi list. Uh, and this is kind of uh, doing similar things um, to uh, to those lists, just less <laughs> less Ayavug and less powerful. Yeah, so it, it it's got like the standard cards you would think of in a, like a quote unquote Aldrazi list, right? You have Matter Reshaper, Thought Knots, your Reality Smasher. That's kind of the core. Yeah, the core twelve. Of any Aldrazi list, and then this list is is running two Endbringers, which yeah. we've seen in Aldrazi Tron. Um, a little bit harder to cast in this because you don't reliably uh, are going to have six mana. Though Aldrazi Temple goes a, a long way for that. Yeah, and you do have you know birds and some nobles and some uh, uh, talismans. Yeah, which definitely uh, I, oh, it has oh, mine, one, mine one, mine one, mine one mine stone. Yeah, you can't technically play talisman. talisman. I think like the, the, the secret Eldrazi that like we haven't seen uh, a lot of play was the Eldrazi Obligator. Yeah, Just playing four of these. The uh, the Steal your girl, Eldrazi. Yeah, th- this is a nice one against you know things like I don't know, Ulamog or you know <laughs> Death Shadow. Yeah. Death Shadow, especially if you're at a high enough life total where you just yeah, kill you it. just kill it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it's been uh, Tasker. Tasker has been a good one to steal that uh, I, I saw today on on stream. Oh yeah, uh, like yeah, or Gourmet Gangler, or mm-hmm. any, anything. I mean, anything large, like in the mirror match, or if uh, again, well, maybe not a straight mirror, but I guess another Eldrazi deck, you like take their Reality Smasher or something like that. Like, pretty good. Um, this deck d- definitely gets uh, has the benefit of being able to play uh, both Grove of the Burnwellers and Carplusion Forest, which are like Trilands, you know, in, yeah. in, this, in this list. Um, which a lot of the other color combinations don't really have that option. Um, uh, I, I mean, guess you could play like filter lands or something like you that. You have like Horizon Canopy for green. green but that doesn't add colorless. Oh, no, it doesn't. I was forgetting yeah. about that. It just taps for color. My bad. But yeah, I mean, this is a list uh, that I had seen around a Magic Online. And I think mm-hmm. I think you played this at the Pro Tour as well. I'm going to double check this right now. But uh, obviously, it hadn't really put up any results. I think like it might have 5 0 like a Magic Online League at one point. But. Yeah, so he he actually played this to a seventy three finish in modern at Pro Tour Rivals of Ixalan. So obviously it was a deck that he knew, or he had been playing for a little while at least. Yeah, pretty cool. I mean, I mean this deck plays Keswick Wolf Run, and uh, that's a, that's a winner in my book. <laughs> I, mean, I love that card, uh, but I think this deck is is pretty cool and like still continues to be viable and actually gets kind of an upgrade due to the unbannings. And um, I, I I think like. <sighs> Obviously, it's kind of awkward because Noble Hierarch's in this deck, and Noble Hierarch's pre- pretty expensive card. Um, uh, but uh, and, and you know, you even have four the Cavern four Cavern of Souls. Four yeah. Cavern of Souls, <laughs> also a fairly expensive card. But I still think this deck's really cool, uh, in all honesty. And I'd, I'd really like to play it, but I'm nowhere close to having a. Uh, you know, I'm missing all the uh, money cards basically <laughs> from it. That's that's pretty rough. Pretty rough. Uh, do you know what uh, Kessel Wolfron's secret mode in modern is? 
uh, kill Phantasmal. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> that was the secret mode and standard <laughs> when it was legal. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, so always, always keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, this, this deck's pretty sweet. Um, now we can talk a lot about the uh, the top eight because there were four mono green Tron lists in the top eight. Excuse me, I'm going to go vomit. Yes. Yeah, this is kind of the, the the story, the real story of the tournament. It wasn't so much that I, I didn't hear. Like I, I was at the I was at the open all weekend in, in Indianapolis, and I didn't hear what won the tournament. All I heard what kept over and over was that four Tron decks were in the top eight. Now, I have to admit that's pretty wild. To, to to be per- perfectly honest, you know what I think's wilder? Two abs and decks made top eight. Also, also wild. <laughs> um, apparently, a lot of people summoned all their strength from Reduke and uh, decided to uh, jam some uh, some abs on. Yeah. Especially Marcio Carvalho, who I mean, who beat lost Tron the, yeah. to get into the finals. I, well, yeah, I, I imagine he beat at least one of them to get to the finals. But oh, yeah, yeah he he lost in the finals, uh, of course. But. Uh, Good run. I think you say, of course. Of course. Well, we, we just talked about the winning. No, list, I thought so. you just meant like that's what cover you does. <laughs> and, that's not uh, what it meant, but I guess uh, that works. Sick but. burn, Dave. <laughs> sick burn. Um, but uh, I, I, that's crazy. Uh, I, I think that the Tron has like some, some swings because we'll take a look at the the other tournaments and we we will see that it, it is definitely not as prominent. Um, I I just wonder if this was just uh, a. A good tournament uh, for for that particular you know deck, but I mean Europe, the, European tournaments are also a little weird than normally are. Yeah, I, mean, I think when we look at you know GPs that are in like Japan or GPs that are in uh, uh, Europe, they can get a little wacky, especially with modern. Hey, did you not see the Soul Flare deck that was on camera day yeah. one? I, I got that link to me. The Soul, uh, Soul Flare surprise because I, I, I got a picture of that link to me because there was Drog Skull Reaver up on coverage. Oh, I was yeah. like, whoa, what like. Uh, doesn't actually cast it. Doesn't matter. I love that card, and I hard cast it many times in standard when it was legal. So, um, yeah, that, that was sweet to see. So, get some wacky stuff for sure. I, to your point, though, about Tron, like I definitely think Tron is, is a tier one deck. Oh yeah, at this point in modern, I think um, going forward, I think it'll continue to be because typically lines up pretty well against Jund strategies, so Bloodbraid and kind of can ignore jace for the most part yeah so but uh yes yeah, so I, I wasn't surprised to see this i think you gotta look you know with modern tournaments i think you can't really focus so much on the top eight but it, you know you look at the whole top 32 as a whole you had a couple more tron lists kind of uh peppering the top 32 uh, as well but mm-hmm. it's not like it was you know an overwhelming it just happened to be a lot of them in the top eight right uh, I do want to give a shout out to Elliot uh, Bussard, who finished uh, 26th place playing uh, Ob- Obzon Aggro. Getting in with that Doran. Siege Tower. Appreciate it. Well, I was going to say, like the old the old standard deck? Yeah, the old standard deck. <laughs> um, I mean, kind of sort of. You got some Siege Rhinos. <laughs> you definitely got some Siege Rhinos. You got some Anna Fens as the foremost. You're, you're kind of getting there. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Doran Siege Tower. Keep on keeping on. Um, Doran the Siege Star is just a sweet card. Oh, for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, I want to talk about the five color uh, Gifts Ungiven deck that was in 31st place. Oh, man. That list was crazy. <laughs> it, it, it sounds pretty wild. Oh, yeah. It's oh, not, yeah. I yeah, remember I this deck. I don't even really know what's going on here. So, this deck it's got is, Ring to Light in it, and it's like, I don't know. Like, what do you oh, do? Ring to Light for Unbearer Rights. Uh, so, yeah, this deck is old school. Four, uh, four Cigar Tribe Elder, then one Cigar to Host of Herons, one Thrag Tusk, one Elastorn, one Ashen Rider, one Iona. So, yeah. Man, that's so sweet. this like this used to kind of be a deck like earlier on in in modern, and um, kind of fell to to the wayside. But yeah, you could do some some pretty cool uh, some pretty cool things with the uh, with this deck. This looks like a uh, like Kamigawa block constructed, you know, Gibson <laughs> given with the with the Sakura Tribalders and everything. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know how this deck wins any games, but. It's pretty sweet. It won enough to top thirty two. Yeah, GP, absolutely. So. Um, but yeah, that's that was spicy. And then it, Blue it Black is definitely also spicy. Was the thirty second place list? So yeah, yeah. So if you thought you had uh, modern figured out, uh, I guess think again. You know, 
I mean, Red, green, Eldrazi, four Tron decks on the top eight, blue, black, mill, and five colored gifts. Look, Mill's playing four Manic Scribe. Yeah, man. When it enters the battlefield, the target opponent puts top three cards of his or library into his or graveyard. This is a shadow or a Shadows of Rinnishrod card. And yeah, it has and Delirium. It has delirium. Right? Yeah. Oh, man, and it, it triggers at each upkeep if you have Delirium. Oh, yeah. Ooh. So. Cool. Seems a okay. Spicy. Um, I mean, obviously, like I said, we have to take all these results with, with a grain of salt. Um, not saying that you know um, they are invalid uh, in any way, shape, or form, but they, if you know, people had access to the cards that they you know had needed have access to and were legal at that point in time, then maybe we'd be looking at a little bit of a different you know uh, top thirty-two. But uh, still, some sweet decks to look at and some ideas to uh, uh, take in when you are looking to prepare for your you know next modern tournament. Anything else for GP Leon before we move on? No. All right. Let's talk about Indie. It was uh, reported by Star City Games as the largest open, uh, which is more likely the largest two-day open or just the largest open period. I don't know. They said they said they announced it as the largest open. I, I, I don't know. know. Yeah, I, I went looking exactly. for some of the older archive stuff, and I'm not seeing I, even the ones I thought were bigger. I'm not seeing that number, so it very well could be. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, wild, uh, in all honesty, like, uh, you know, that clearly not having, uh, Jace or uh, blood red elf be legal did not have any impact on people wanting to attend. Yeah. I, I honestly, I, I didn't expect this one to be as big, uh, because I know a lot of people are saying, yeah, I'm going to set out this one, but you know, had, had those two cards been legal, I definitely would have gone, you know, I saw that a lot on social media and things like that, but Definitely know some people, you know, that made the trip from Columbus on the day of and got shot out because the event hit the cap. That's luckily, rough. luckily, I pre-regged the, the night before, so I was able to play. But, uh, yeah, there were definitely some people there that were not able to play in the open. But. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, so I think I want to point out that the, the winner I thought was kind of ironic. Oh, the guy who doesn't like modern. <laughs> so Brendan Candio won it, uh, but he wrote an article this week about how modern's a dead format, essentially, <laughs> with the unbannings, and got got some heat for it. I mean, DeCandio is a guy who writes with with a pretty like I I, I, I guess I won't call it aggressive, but he's a, he's pretty direct in his statements. So I thought it was really funny that he like was like I don't like modern, I play it because I have to. Modern's a dead format because of Jace, and then he's like goes out and wins this open. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, Jace wasn't legal yet. No, so. I know, but it was just like it was just like funny. It's like I won the last ever open in yeah. modern, yeah. last <laughs> real modern tournament. Congrats to him though. He played you know, Grixis Death Shadow and a solid list, and mm-hmm. yeah, deck is he, just wonderful. He played the list that I should have played. Oh, so I, I ended up playing. <laughs> Interesting. Dave's got list remorse. <laughs> no, I, I think like I, I've 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 finally come around to the fact that I make a lot of bad choices when it comes to decks <laughs> like i tend to play decks that are like are, are fun but not necessarily that good I, I got to have the reverse moment after all these years when all the years yeah. ago dave was like mike you, you're gonna play her but you gotta play better decks i looked at dave and he was like look you know, talking about decks for this open i was like dave you gotta stop switching decks and just like play a deck it's like i will when jace is on bay you know, well, that's like, true. like that's okay true. But, i am gonna play mono but i said decks. like dave i implore you stop doing this to yourself yeah now, so for the for the open, I played the four color traverse shadow deck. I uh, actually just played straight uh, Emmanuel Gershenson's list from the Pro Tour. He, he think he went nine and one uh, in the modern section. So I just card for card copied the list. Uh, deck was pretty hard to play. Yeah, though I mean I have played traverse shadow versions before, so it wasn't like completely new to me. But like. Um, if you're playing Grixis Shadow, for example, there aren't as many things to worry about. But like with Traverse Shadow, you always, you already you have to worry about, okay, do I have Delirium for my Traverses? How big are these Tarmogoyfs? So you always got to keep track of that. There's just a lot to think about. Remember to draw for Bobbles. Yeah. I will, I, I, I will say, <laughs> yeah. I played Bobbles in both the Open and the Classic. Did not miss one Bobble trigger nice, this weekend. Nice, good job. So Proud of you. It, <laughs> I think it was the first time. You played Bobbles in Grixis? I did. Interesting. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that when we talk about the classic. But oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, spoiler alert. Didn't didn't run back to Rush Shadow. <laughs> <Classic. laughs> yeah, funny, but fun, uh, yeah, fun also story. spoiler alert. Played in the classic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert. Do not do well in the open. Uh, so I finished five and four in the open. 
The only reason why I played all nine rounds is because we did bed draft for the Airbnb that we stayed in. Uh, so, so no, you guys didn't make the trip. Um, I ended up going with some buddies from Columbus, and uh, we stayed in an Airbnb that had uh, two beds, a couch, and then there was like a, a shorter couch, and then we also bought, brought like a blow-up mattress. So we all made the, the deal that, you know, best record on day one gets first pick of bed then second pick you know and so on yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh our buddy griff was the only one that day two'd um and congrats to him on that because he started oh two in the tournament and then rattled up seven straight wins to day wow two, so that was pretty cool uh so he obviously got the first pick and then uh the rest of us were tied at five and four so it came down to tie breaks and um yeah i got last pick so oh. <laughs> <laughs> rough bad beats yeah yeah bad beats i ended up taking the short couch it wasn't it wasn't all that bad I've definitely slept worse on some of these trips before. So uh, we all we all have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you've ever like crowded into you know a hotel room with like six people, I think we've all been there before with like some of these things. Yeah, you, uh, it wasn't yeah, as bad as that. Guess so. what? I'm over it. I'm <laughs> yeah. super over it. Yeah, super over it. <laughs> I remember. I remember a certain like L2 judge friend of the show sleeping underneath a desk. Yeah, because we, we that was all the room we had in our hotel room. This is true. So, and to be fair, he made it real comfy looking. It, like, did, I was it like, did look like, really it was comfy, like cozy. It was like what? Like I don't, I won't fit there. Hey, when, I when know life, it. When life gives you lemons, man. You, well, you he make made a lemon. You for make it? a desk bed. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, but they, but the yeah, the open was pretty frustrating. Like some of it was, uh, you know, I, I definitely made some errors. Um, that were very apparent, uh, and also like the deck couldn't handle certain. Like I lost to Affinity twice, felt really bad, and I, I don't know if like the list that that was played at the Pro Tour maybe they weren't expecting a lot of Affinity. It just felt like it was a little soft to Affinity because they did. Like I lost to draws that weren't even like that good. It was just like you know, play play some Signal Pest and some one ones, and then I just die because I just can't yeah. handle them. It's just like. Yeah, that shouldn't be good enough. To yeah, that should me, be but, the case. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's why I switched up for the classic. Yeah, fair enough. Um, any notable lists you wanted to uh, kind of highlight or talk about um, from the open? Not, not really. Not really. I, I will say, you know, we see some familiar faces in the top eight. I mean, we have Benjamin Nikolic top eighting another. Yeah, with another Jessica, open with just guy control is like signature just, deck. So like it's like insane. So when he can play Jason's just guy control list, does he just like not lose anymore? He's just gonna go super saiyan. Yeah, it's like, like uh, oh, you haven't seen me at my final form. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, that, that's like worrisome. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever the play against them, but like he's literally has untapped power. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, also Dylan Donegan. With another top eight with with Grixis Death Shadow deck, yeah. he's been playing for uh, forever, for, you know, quite some time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's. I don't know if there was anything else that was no. really. Uh, we we do see that you know this this tournament definitely has a different outlook on Tron. The 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 highest placing list we have is uh, Jim Davis, um, placing nineteenth. Uh, in the in the open with uh, with Tron, we do see the Eldrazi Tron, but that is uh, quite a different flavor, I would say, uh, than your Mio you know, Mono Green or your green, green Black or Green X Tron lists. Um, but overall, I, I do want to say that it was a, a pretty good weekend for uh, for Team BCW. Um, yeah, uh, we had you know Decandia winning, uh, Davis coming in nineteenth, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. But uh, uh, Todd Stevens won the Standard Classic, so. Uh, Definitely some good results coming up from uh, that the, the the team that is uh, what sponsored by uh, our sponsor. Yeah, yeah, Ross Mary. The team that is what by sponsored by our sponsor. Yeah, <laughs> what? sure. Yeah, what? we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Uh, uh, no, uh, Ross Mary finished twenty third in the open as well. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. You only, like, you only get shout outs at 22 or higher. It's uh, it's like those guys that are good <laughs> at magic or hey, something. Twenty third is a perfectly respectable finish. Okay. Uh, so uh, Why you say that? moving on Twitter. to the uh, <laughs> modern classic, thanks for the segue, Dave. Uh, we have uh, Greg Williams winning it with a uh, red white prison, um, uh, defeating Teamer mid range in the finals, piloted by Robert Meadows. Uh, shout oh, outs to uh, Ray Perez for getting third, blue white control. Sorry you couldn't take it out, take the whole thing down, bud. But uh, we were rooting for you. Um, 
And then we have uh, just some some other, you know, various uh, modern strategies showing up. Grixis, Death Shadow, Elves, Ad Nauseam, Affinity, and Dredge to sort of finish out the uh, the rest of the top eight. So a couple of things I just want to point out here. That team or mid-range deck that finished second is sweet. Uh, I think that team or mid-range deck is also the Ghost of Christmas Future. We're going to talk about uh, some lists with Jason Bloodbraid in it. And there's a team list that's been going around that this has a lot of similar cards to it. So it's like he was just getting ready. He was getting his, yeah. his sleeves prepped yeah. for Jace. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then also the... Remember a couple weeks ago that Goryo's Owls for Told deck that played like three different combos? It's all jammed into one deck? Yeah. This it's, Army it's Knight back. Of yeah. combos. Tom, Tom Medvick, he's the guy that played it in that tournament. Uh, played it again here to a ninth place finish. Oh, so that's pretty sweet. Deck still looks crazy. <laughs> so crazy. Listen, you'll just it'll one of them. You'll have one of I, them every game, right? I, I you thought have one piece of one <laughs> and one piece of another. Uh, I got this kiki jiki in this <laughs> and, and this as for told. Yeah. Oh man, oh, that's not cool. <laughs> it's just a taste explosion every time you play it. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I did. I, I thought this is a you know possibly a deck that could pick, be picked up at the pro tour and maybe you know do some damage turned out to not be the case it's a little too crazy but uh apparently you know tom medvick knows what he's doing uh, i just like this deck is playing seven cards that have no cmc it's it's beautiful it's a beautiful thing (laughs) yeah (sighs) crazy so um so i played grixis death shadow for this tournament uh and for this one i actually picked up uh ben friedman's list that he played at the Pro Tour and he's been writing about, um, which is, I guess the, the the main differences are that he plays zero Serum Vision, zero Opt, and instead plays Mishra's Bobbles. Mm. So basically the only cantrips were the Bobbles and the... Uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, uh, street Wraiths? Uh, thought Scours. Oh, Thought Scours. I guess the Street Wraiths yeah, too. Yeah, fair um, And then also like four Garmeg Anglers, no Tassikers. So... Kind of like the list, and the the sideboard was pretty tight. Um, and honestly, I, you know, I can say after playing nine rounds with the deck, uh, I ended up twenty third. I had an awkward two draws in, in the tournament. Yeah, that uh, was pretty weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, but only only one actual loss. But uh, so I finished finished you know just outside of the top sixteen there. But um, the list felt really good. Like the sideboard was was great. Um, I think it's just a really well put together list. Yeah, like, I've, like, I've been liking Friedman's like all of his Death Shadow lists because his his yeah. is the one I played at regionals uh, as well. Is, is when he brought when we were talking about bringing back Tier Battle Rage. So every every updated version of his list, I've been a big fan of. Yeah, and, and even like the, the, the sideboard was was great. Like in almost all the matchups, like it was just like the the swaps for for the sideboard felt really good. Like I wasn't left with any like random awkward cards in the deck. You know what I mean? Like there was something there for, for pretty much everything that I needed to face. Nice. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you could just tell like when you play like a really like well put together list that you're just like, okay, yeah, like there really wasn't anything I would have changed. Um, now obviously going forward, you may want to change a few things to like incorporate, you know, for, for Jace or whatever, but so like maybe you want to play an extra lightning bolt or maybe you want to play like a dread war or something like that. But, um, yeah, I, I really, I really like the list a lot, and I would encourage people to to check it out. I mean, it's it's a little like off the beaten path, especially when it comes to Grixis Shadow. But um, you know, the bobbles look a little strange, but it it was nice. It, it ran really smoothly. So, um, I do think it's interesting that so you played Ben Freeman's Grixis Shadow list. Ben Freeman also wrote an article last week about how modern is dead. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't really like that article, but I liked his deck list. <laughs> and then Decandio won the open with Grixis Shadow, and also maybe you know maybe they're prophets from the future. Maybe we're just wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I realized. So like, I had all, like so much fun playing the Grixis Shadow list, and I think I realized like the reason why I play like these Delver decks and like these sh- and like I have fun playing these Shadow decks is just like I just like to battle. Like, <laughs> not every game is going to be easy when you play these types of lists, and like. Especially with Shadow, it's like, it's really like figuring out a puzzle. It's like, okay, how much life can I lose? How much do I want to let them hit me? You know what I mean? Like, it's really like just trying to figure it out. And then you, have, you end up having a lot of like really close, like tense games. I think that's just like, those are the games that I love to play. So, I don't know. I, I guess like I should have been playing Grixis Shadow all this time, probably. Yeah, I'm just going through the list of things that you played recently. which So, obviously, Grixis Shadow, 
Traverse Shadow. Like Blue Moon. Blue Moon, a Haunter. Like, Madcap Moon. Yep. Um, through the Breach Moon. Storm. Blue Red Pyromancer. Blue Red Pyromancer. <laughs> yeah, just stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> he just what am I needed, doing? He just needed his anchor. He needed his Jace. Yeah, maybe just go play 8-Rack for a while. Just get away from Islands. <laughs> or 8-Wack, I guess. As yeah, you call it. play some Goblins. Some Gerblins. <laughs> That's uh, here they be here they here they be all them gerblins. Um, so uh, so yeah, that is uh, that was the uh, modern classic, and then of course you know we had Todd Stevens winning the standard classic with a blue black control. So uh, uh, shout out to him. Um, anything interesting from me? I, I feel like uh, standard is, is something that uh, we haven't had a whole lot of like time and energy to focus on. Uh, I know that I've been trying to. Uh, Q for the, the the RPTQ and have had very poor success in, in doing so, unfortunately. Um, but uh, I, I'm, I am excited that we actually have a standard uh, GP coming up. So we have GP Memphis. And I'm excited to like be able to talk about that next week and, and kind of lean into talking about a little bit standard. Um, because I, I, I think I have some opinions uh, about it. And uh, I'm not sure if they're like entirely positive but it is in a overall much better space than it has been previously uh in recent history at the very least yeah i was gonna say with 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 this weekend we pretty much only have a standard gp i think like next week and we can really like next week's show we can really dive into to standard because yeah. we haven't really touched standard in like a month <laughs> if, yeah, I mean, we've kind of mentioned it but you know yeah, that's what it feels like. Uh, honestly, in, looking at this top 16, you know, there's not a ton of, like, you see a lot of mono red, a lot of Marty vehicles, blue eye control, which you saw. I do want to mention the green white aggro deck, though. Yeah, this is the, the Willy Idol it's special. Like, it's like tokens, right? Well, so this this deck, this specific list, I've seen a bunch of times on Magic Online now. It's get, This list goes a couple different directions. Um, no, it plays an Oketra, the true. Yes. Uh, which, yeah, Oketra, get a little bit of this. Uh, it, it, we've, you know, it has a Dorn Pouncer, a Dante's Vanguard, which is quickly showing its its ability to be one of the better two drops in the format. Yeah. Um, I'm it's happy. Playing, glad, that, glad that the kitty cat has uh, found, found a place. Oh, I was talking about Vanguard. But oh, I was fine. talking about Dorn Pouncer. Uh, but Merfolk, Ranch Walker, and Jade Light Ranger, so like it's, it, that sort of seems to be helping with it. But they, yeah, when you talk about tokens, it's playing four Servo Exhibition and three SRAMs Expertise. Um, which is a card that like you know, got a lot of hype when it first got printed, mainly because of how it worked with Fuse cards, and now it no longer works with those cards anymore. But uh, really, you know, these cards with this effect on them haven't seen a ton of play in Standard recently. Brawl's expertise was seeing a, a fair amount of play in Teamer before they printed the uh, the one sided bounce spell. Um, what was it? I can't remember what it's called now. The six mana one. Uh, Rivers Rebuke. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but beyond that, though, these cards haven't been seen very much play. But in this deck. Like you can do some crazy things with Sram's expertise because you you get three guys and then you can immediately put in you know uh, a J Light Ranger you know there's a Gideon you could put into play um, those three Sram's expertise those three tokens of Sram's expertise immediately you know, like the next turn they will by themselves flip uh, your Legion's landing Legion's landing yeah. uh, and then it plays four appeal to authority which is a, is like a pretty unassuming card but the fact that it gives trample to the creature that you put it on like. This deck just built like I, I playing against it. Like I just wasn't thinking about that card. And the first time they did that to me, it was like, okay, they have like seven tokens, but I'm going to burn them out next turn. And then it was just like, no, pump this guy, tap your team, you're dead. And I was like, oh no, like, <laughs> oh no, no. And if you know, think about again, like Adonto's Vanguard, for example, like that's the perfect card in this list to all of a sudden randomly get appealed, and then you're like, oh no, 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 no. Like I can't, I'll kill it in response. And I'm like, nah, I don't think you will. I don't like, think you will. <laughs> but I wanted to. Yeah, so that's um, pretty sweet. Yeah, I think it's, I think yo, know, this is you know, we might call this like green white little kid a little bit, but uh, I think it's kind of sweet. And like you see cards like you know, like uh, Chef at Dunes really putting in work at a deck like this. Can I just say that this, this sideboard is a thing of beauty? Let me tell you, <laughs> this is like just a bunch of like one and two ofs. Yeah, just we're just doing it. Like <laughs> this is like the, no it. no search like or anything like that. It's, we're just talking like you know. Thrashing Brontodon, Ixalan's Binding, Carnage Tyrant, Dust Dawn. Like, this it does is, seem like a sweet Dust Dawn deck. This and just comes uh, at you from like a million different angles. Now, like. uh, let me allow you to remind you. Uh, let me allow. There, you allow have me. some statements tonight. That <laughs> let me allow myself to remind <laughs> myself. <laughs> Please allow me to remind you how awful Hawatli Radiant Champion is because it is nowhere in this list. Yeah, no, seriously, it's playing appeal to authority, and Hawatli is almost that on a stick. Except for it's not because it's a bad card. <laughs> and don't play that card. Yeah, uh, play much better planeswalkers like I guess Gideon of the Trials, but definitely uh, Nissa Vital Force <laughs> in the sideboard. 
you guys want to talk about uh, Ali Trazi's four color control? This is like the most Ali Trazi deck. Oh, all I remember time. looking at this list and going, I don't understand it. So <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Like, don't even look at it yet, right? It's got some ramp of some kind. <laughs> it's probably yep. more than three colors. Don't, <laughs> yeah. so, so don't even look at it. Uh, what colors? What are the four colors? Blue, black, Eight. green. <laughs> Already wrong. <laughs> Doesn't that blue? No. <laughs> well, you know it's green. Yep. yep. I guess Just red, okay. Red. Yeah, red and white. <laughs> Come on, he's playing white. Black. Yeah, he's playing white. Yeah, he has one white card in the sideboard. Yeah, but that's where the fourth color is. Yeah, it's Zakama Primal Calamity. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> of course it is. That's where the fourth color oh, is. <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 this is really, and I don't. This is not to say anything against like you know <laughs> uh, Ali Andrazi, but literally, if you read uh, Jerry Thompson's list this week or article this week, he talked about like how Doomfall, and he literally he had a quote where it was like. Honestly, if you're playing Doomfall, you've done something wrong. And I looked at here for Doomfall. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Ali, why? Well, well it, uh, Ali, uh, he, he does his own thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he, doesn't, is... he, doesn't, listen to, to, he doesn't listen to anybody else. He, he's got his own play style. And, God, uh the mad at compasses. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's just, he's a madman. He's but you know what, though? He, he does put a lot of thought into these lists. It's not like he's just throwing together oh, cards. Oh, no, no, no. Though you could look at it and be like, what the heck is this in here? But, I, you know, I know that, that he does test, you know, he does test these, at least to some extent. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's a reason why he, he consistently puts up results with these wacky, crazy decks. Uh, it, it's really interesting to me that Mastermind's acquisition is slowly becoming sort of like a, a thing that's really happening in the format. Like, I, I, there was a black-green deck that wasn't very good, but it was playing Azor's Gateway. Mm-hmm. But this list, and there's a black-white list that's been running around Moto that's like black-white control with um, Profane Processions and then a couple of Mastermind's acquisitions, and it's it, it, it's been doing okay, and I think it's kind of interesting because I, I really wouldn't have pegged that card to be good enough. Uh, but when you look at the sideboard, the black green deck, and this card has it too. Uh, the card Wildest Dreams, like man, man, if you're going if you're going long against any deck, and you just get to go get Wildest Dreams with like ten mana in play, oh, like it's like well, you like you like drawing four cards. What if they're automatically curated best cards that were in your graveyard? Yeah. So remember seasons past. Remember how like good oh, that card man. was for for some time. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what Wildest Dreams becomes in, in this sort of list. Li- in this sort of list, but you could also it, just go get a, literally as a comma. For, so, like, why not? It, I, hey, I, I love too that like with the Hour of Promise package here. It's just like all these deserts too. So he's he's turning it on too. We're not just like just ramping. We're like we're getting zombies too. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Uh, but I, I look at the, like these kind of like sort of rampy style lists and like I, they're very attractive. Like. Uh, I, I I kind of wish they they looked a little bit better to be a little bit more tempting, but I guess something about just playing a big mana deck that I always find pretty appealing. Don't play this one. I I'm not. I'm All just right. saying. I wish it looked better. Uh, I am oh. no Ollie and Trotley, so I will not yeah. try to play this deck. Also, what's going on with the uh, Vraska's contempt? What do you mean? Cards just like a million dollars. Yeah, it's the best removal spell in standard. I did not expect that to be like a fifty dollars card. It says when Hazard and the Scarab God are the you, two premier yes. threats of the format. And it's this true. this is the cleanest answer to both of them. I mean, we did talk about that in the, in the Palooza, but I still didn't expect this, you know, to be yeah, well, the premier card. Yeah, thought Wizards would have printed something else that could, you know, interact earlier than turn four, but or, nope. Yeah. So here we are at fifteen dollars for Asus Contempt. All right, I have played that. Mean, Heroes Downfall was close to ten dollars for a long time in standard. Yeah. So. Yeah, but this one costs an extra mana. And exi- life. A, exiles things, which is yeah, important. Yeah, and exiles pretty big. Pretty important. When the two of the threats uh, need to be no, exiled. I, I to agree. Be like, I, like, I understand like why it's good in the format. It's just like, did not uh, did not think that that no, was going to be the card that I, was I like, you that. know, the, the chase that. card of the set. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to Kirk Rhodes. He's a, a local player as well, showing up in the uh, top eight of this. Uh, playing Marty Vehicles. So, vroom, vroom. Nice. <laughs> beep, beep, vroom, vroom. Ring, ring, ring goes the trot. That's not the same, is it? Yeah. I, <laughs> so I, I don't know what the discrepancy was between the modern classic and the uh, and the standard classic as far as numbers players, but I know that the modern classic had almost like 400 people in it. Yeah. Because, I mean, to be fair, like, most people didn't bring, like, another deck, so you'd expect the classic to be the bigger of the classics. It, it usually uh, is anyway. Yeah. It's modern, but yeah. Um, 
Now, before we jump into talking about the 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 Magic Online deck list, um, I did want to. I just remembered something that we forgot to bring up, uh, which is Dryad Arbor. Um, yeah, this so this is I, a thing that happened in GP Leon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about this because I didn't see so, this. I, I was I at. Saw I was. That. I was it at. Was cringy. Yeah. I was in so, Indy. Yes. I didn't see this. Here's the situation. You have uh, Gabe Nassif playing Red Black Hollow One. Yeah. Oh, I think it meant cosplaying the man in the yellow hat from and, Curious George. It's, he wears a yellow hat. I don't know if that's his intent, if that's what he wants to do. Uh, he doesn't have the Rangers outfit, so I don't think it's a full cosplay. Right, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but uh, he's playing Red Black Hollow One, and he is a, uh, a souped up um, flame blade, flame blade adept. adept yeah. uh, that he's he is trying to figure out if he can attack into his uh, opponent's suited up boggle. Um, his opponent has a tapped land and a dried arbor in play. The dried arbor is in the lands where you would commonly have lands. It is separated, though. It is by itself it in is, the lands It is section. completely by itself. And this is a from the vaults dried arbor. Yeah, the, the gross one that like looks like a forest. Yep. So, um, he, I think like he, if he gets an attack in, he has enough to kill his, um, his opponent, yes, uh, pretty much with a lightning bolt. Important to remember that Flame Blood Adept has menace. Yes, correct. This is why this attack is even like something that's being thought right. because the boggle is untapped. So it goes in and he he does the math and runs through his head and then he he swings in and his opponent double blocks and uh, Gabe Masif is trying to figure out why his opponent just is double blocking with this forest and much to his disappointment. Realizes that it's a dryad arbor and not a forest. Uh, so this is clearly something that he did not realize before making these attacks, but was not something that was hidden either. Um, and uh, he loses the game, basically, due to this action. I think he, he does try to talk to some, some judges about this uh, situation, but nothing really can be done. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty... Uh, there's a lot of talk. There's, there's currently a lot of talk about banning this version of dryad arbor from uh, constructed tournaments. Well, it, yeah, it, this is like something that's been discussed like before anyway. Just this version of it is just like, it's just, I don't know why they ever thought it was a good idea to print, but I, here's, here's my argument. Hey, you know what? Everyone knows what that card looks like because they hate it so much. Apparently well, to be fair, I mean, Gavin Asif is somebody who streams a lot, plays a lot of magic online, obviously. Um, I don't know how much paper magic he actually plays. The cards available on Magic Online too. Bro. His opponent can, had three can, lands in play, and that one was separated. You could also just like pay attention. Like this is not me to criticize the Ogem to but like right, you could also pay attention to what your opponent's I, doing. But I'm just saying, right? Like if he, if his his main way of p- playing paper magic is like Pro Tours mostly, and he otherwise just plays on Magic Online, and the Pro Tours are mostly standard, and we had one modern one, but. It's possible that he had never seen it before. It's possible. I, I also wonder if he would have still made that same attack if his opponent had a fetch land then. Like, would he have played around, like, Dryad Arbor if his opponent had a fetch land to play instead of that? Because that's ostensibly the same. Mm, maybe. You know what I mean? I don't know. Like, I, didn't, I didn't see it, so, I, you know, I don't know. But, yeah, that, that, I will agree that that version is, is gross. I, I, oh, don't know. I, I, I don't know it, that you can ban it. It looks bad, but you can't ban an individual copy of a card. I don't think that's yeah. something you could feasibly do. It's just one of those hey, things. Hey, all you people have this version, only this version? Suck it. Uh, so can we go back like, in time and just it, make people, it so People that they, they could do it if there's a trade-in program. There you go. <laughs> which is adorable. <laughs> uh, but I, I, you know what? <laughs> Again. It's I, like a guns front. Like a, like a thing. Yeah. Like, turn your guns in here. Yeah, turn your evil dried arbors in and we'll give you good ones. <laughs> I, okay, I guess. Like... But in honesty, that printing of the card does not bother me. I know what that card looks like. It is a very distinctive printing. It has a color indicator and a power toughness box. It says Dryad Arbor. It does not say Forest. I can read cards. Uh, if if like you're just identifying cards by like the the tree picture in the in the text box, like you got you got to look harder, man. You yeah, gotta, I, I think that's yeah. I agree with you 100 on that. Because like I also think like every time I've seen that card in play, like unless my opponent's blocking with it or suiting it up somehow because it's been boggles or infect. It's always in his lands pile. Like, it, that card is never... Like, I, I would play that card in my lands pile because I wouldn't play it like a creature. i play it like a land. And, like, his opponent didn't, like, shuffle it into his lands and, like, make it look shady. Like, no, it was... Like, you could see it. Like, when I clicked on that clip, when I looked down, I said, oh, he's, he's going to attack into the Dryad Armor. Like, I knew immediately what he was going to do. Like, because you could see it. Now, granted, I could see a top-down view and to see if you can't see the top-down view. But, like, yeah, I agree with you. You just got to be aware. It sucks, but you got to be aware. I think, like, this is this is a... 
this is a thing it, because it happened to on on coverage and to Gabrielle Nassif. Uh and if it didn't happen to Nassif, it just happened to like a no name that people would be less dramatic about yeah, it. Yeah, you're right. You're 100 percent right. Yeah. So if it happened to a random guy who was like, "Hey, I think this is bad." They'd be like, "Oh, come on." Yeah. But. If it happened to, to random guy, they'd be making fun of random guy, not feeling bad for him. Right. That's true. That's so, very true. Please, yeah, search inward. Yeah. Search please inward. analyze like where this is coming from, uh, and be careful if your opponent is playing like a, a, a green X deck that realistically has access to a dried arbor. Yeah. Check check their land pile. You know, just just double check ch- double check the situation. It's not that hard. Even that funky printing of dried arbor still clearly indicates that it is a dried arbor. Uh, so just uh, be careful. That's all I'm asking. And d- don't ask for uh, banning individual cards just because like it's hard to decipher them. Like no, you got I, eyes. I, I mean, I think that's kind of over the top, but and? still, it's does it doesn't change the fact that that card is gross. You know, uh, even if you are a player who is who is blind and plays the game competitively, then your opponent's going to tell you that they they have a fetch land or dried arbor, and hopefully, you know they 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 can't lie to you or that's misleading the game state. So there you go, you're covered. Uh, but uh, I'm just saying, I, I, I not everyone has the ability that ever has the ability to see that plays the game. You know, I want to respect everyone that could be listening to the podcast. Except for Gabriel to see, <laughs> he he has eyes. Yeah, I know he can see. <laughs> I'm 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 like a hundred percent certain those are two facts. Well, he once was blind, but now can see <laughs> at least dry arbors. Yeah, for sure. All right, so uh, we uh, have Magic Online data. We have some information. Uh, Blood Parade and Jace have been legal since uh, February fourteenth, <laughs> Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, very it's sweet. The the sweetest day of all. And um, we we got lists on Friday, but they were before and after uh, this change. Uh, but the I believe the lists that we get got today are pretty much all after this you know uh, change in Magic Online has happened and the legality of Blood Raid Elf and Jace are you know legal uh, yeah, at this me, point in time. Let me paint you a picture of these of these lists. So the year is 2018. Uh, modern is a blasted hellscape. Uh, <laughs> there's very few buildings left most of them have crumbled and fallen the last few bastions the 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 affinities the the death shadows they they're stalwart but they look wary haggard aged as they look and no it's not bad it's terrible I, i'm trying, like it's not it's not bad at all actually now uh, uh, this is something that we also like I think we we need more time. Uh, we need more of these like That's uh, what the weary agent of yeah. <laughs> We need more time. We uh we obviously have a bunch of different lists that we see today that, that um that, that that are released uh but these are going to be lists that are uh, at the very uh, least uh 20 cards different from each other. Uh and we won't really know what is continuously successful versus what is a flash in the pan, a lucky, you know, 50 or what have you. Uh, but you know, obviously, the, the powerful cards are getting played. Bloodbraid Elf getting played, Jace getting played, and various different types of strategy. We've seen uh, Teamerless in in this breakdown. Uh, we obviously see like something like Green Red Ponza playing Bloodbraid Elf. We do have a Green Red Eldrazi list as well. Uh, but Mardu Pyromancer is still here. We have some Merfolk. Uh, we have a Mono Red Goblins list because you know why not. Um, and you know traverse shadow storm like uh, there are there are a lot uh, you know this kind of you know lets you see that there are still a lot of lists that can go undefeated in a, in, in a league um I, in a competitive league no, i, I, I want to go back to your point about how you don't know about like if a deck is consistent or good one of the decks on here is uh you green you know there's a uh, ug blue green two emeralds a antorn three garrick relentless three garrick wild speaker one this a vital force two cyclonic rift four explorer one far seek two call of the herd Force oh Virtual yeah! Arm, four polymorph. It's the polymorph yeah. deck. Yeah. Proteus Three staff. Proteus staff. Um, and batter skull. And batter skull. That's cute because you can use the return. And, well, and, and blink well thanks too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, again, all of these lists should be taken with a grain of salt, and that's not, not to take away anything from that sweet, sweet Ooh, list. No, Mike, did you see what's in By the sideboard? A steel man. Mike, did you see the sideboard? No, Sagu Mahler, you're definitely going to lose to this deck. <laughs> oh no! Oh god, no! <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, a. The, 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 the sideboard is just like you just take out the Emberkulz and put it the Sagu Mahler so you can put polymorph into it. <laughs> I, I'm looking at the sideboard and it's just like 
Simic oh. cards from the last yeah. decade. Elder Scale Worm, man. Kiora the Crashing Wave. Like, what? Elder Scale Worm. You know, I get how all the beat, in the world. How does Burn beat that one? Jace the Mind Sculptor is unbanned and modern. And this man, <laughs> this this king of kings. <laughs> does not care. Says, he's like a polymorph. Oh, he's cool. like, no, you know what? I'm going to play... A deck that puts Emerald Cool into play at sorcery speed gives my opponent an opportunity to, <laughs> to bounce, bounce it. it. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's over here doing the Dark Knight like, want to see a magic trick? <laughs> uh, well then. That's why you need the Sogu Mauler. That way Jace can't bounce that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what happens when you morph that against your opponent? Their opponent's just like, morph? What? <laughs> what is that? Excuse, excuse me? What is that? And you're like, flip up Sogu Mauler. And they're like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I, you're like, Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> I can't beat that. Oh man! Uh, but there, you know, there's some interesting lists. There's some zoo lists that are kind of popping back up uh, because of you know things like Bloodbraid Elf are really good in zoo. Uh, as it turns out, there's a, a traditional Jun list that even is is you know kind of showing where people thought exactly Bloodbraid Elf would kind of land. And um, I, you know, uh, you still have your classics. You still have your Burns, your Tron, um, your. Uh, Odrazi trial and stuff like that. Now those are like one of each, but because there's usually not 20 cards differentiation between those lists, to be perfectly honest, like you'd be there's between like each of the Tron lists in like, e- like um, there, there would be between Eldrazi Tron and like a traditional mono green Tron or what have you. But like, who knows how successful those decks are actually being. They're not going to be really high, highly represented in this sort of breakdown. Um, well, we do see a couple variations of the Hollow One deck. We see a Jund list that has Venge Vines and then the traditional uh, Black Red list. Um, Affinities here and uh, Dredge even um, Grishel Brand, you know, still showing up as a as a, a, a you know a list. Apparently, there are there there are two Ironworks combo lists that were at least twenty cards different from each other, uh, which is pretty interesting uh, for uh, for that. Let me take a look at that real quick here. We got Caleb VP's list looks pretty standard with Scrop Trawlers, Mirror Retrievers, Hangerback Walkers, and then all the way up to Emrakul, of course. He's playing Glint S Crane, yes. which isn't really. Um, and then I mean, they're both that... kind of doing the same thing, I guess. Yeah. All right. Um, this, the, 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 the Suke, uh, uh, their list has a lot of the, um, a lot of the, the eggs and stuff like that. It feels like they have less actual, uh, creatures running around in their, their particular list. So, yeah, but kind of, uh, two different variations on the same sort of theme, uh, as it were. I, uh, I, I think what was interesting here, and, you know, we're not going to go through every list or anything, obviously, but... I think it's interesting to see all the different shells that Jace is showing up into. So we have Amulet Titan with three Jace the Mind Sculptors. We have uh, Scape Shift. I know well, there's, there's a, there was, yeah, a there team was, Escape Shift. There was a Scape Shift. We have there's a Bant Company list playing Jace the Mind Sculptors, and also uh, Jeff Hoagland was playing uh, a Chord list with Jason the Mind Sculptor. So not even like the, the decks that you would kind of like think like, oh yeah, like Blue White Control, which obviously we see that as well. But like, I think of like Blue White Control, Grixis, you know, Blue Moon style, you know, kind of, kind of control list, but Jace isn't just limited to just control decks. I mean, you're going to see him show up in like these mid-range creature decks as well. Yeah, I think you can say the same for, um, for Blood Rail though too. Like there's, um, you know, we looked at you know the Zulus we talk about, but there's also like Jun Shadow, uh, the Red Green Eldrazi Tron deck with that as well, like the with the uh, uh, Blood Braid. So I think there's a couple. You know, I don't know. I think it's sweet, but I also think there's also just a ton of decks that are just foregoing it entirely and playing just regular oh, yeah. magic. So yeah, like the Blue Green Polymorph deck. <laughs> yeah, love it. <laughs> Though, I mean, oddly enough, like that deck would love Jason Mind Sculptor. I think. But it's you know, very possible. You shuffle back honest. in your Emrakuls or whatever that you draw. Anyway. Here, here you go, Dave. Blue Moon with four thing in the ice, four Jace. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I, I actually was able to pick up uh, Jace's this weekend, so uh, I'm like, ooh. Which, so uh, which should I play? Another, another new deck. 
Yeah. <laughs> I know. No, well, well, then I was like actually conflicted because I picked up the Jaces, but then I, I was having so much fun playing Grixis Shadow and like, you know, I actually did pretty well with it. I was just like, man, I kind of just want to keep playing this deck, but I also want to play Jace. <laughs> ah. But hey, it's an exciting time to play Modern. <laughs> Grixis Jace's Shadow. Um, and that, that's going to be a thing. Oh, uh, I'm sure it will be. Uh, I think like the biggest takeaway that we actually you know we we do have uh, from this though is that there are still a lot of decks that are doing well in modern. It's not just like I think if the the issue would come in if we didn't have like nearly as many decks show up in this you know this data dump that we we got today. Um, we still have seemingly a lot of. Uh, a theoretical diversity we don't have the whole picture though uh, but there are still a lot of lists that are pretty distinct from each other that are theoretically doing well or I mean, are, are, are capable of 5 0 i guess uh, who knows of how well they're doing but capable of being viable one thing we know for sure there were no lantern decks that went 5-0 in the last week <laughs> they're there we're not uh, so yeah at all. It needs to be banned though remember yeah yeah we need to ban that deck because the one pro tour. Well, don't worry. We'll just you know we'll, we'll turn our uh, our eye to Boggles because it did five zero. So clearly, Boggles yeah, that, is OP. That's the, new, that's the new deck that we need to. And I want a GP. Yeah, ban it. Ban it. Ban it. Ban hexproof it. cards. <laughs> to, to be fair, <laughs> the Wizards has done a pretty good job of like not printing that many Carnage, hexproof cards. Tyrant. I I mean like Carnage Tyrant is good, and so is like uh, apparently Soul of the River, or whatever that card is, the limited rivals card. Apparently people don't like that card. Whatever. In limited. For oh, this set. the one that if you hit the three two flyer. Oh, gotcha. No. I think I know. I've seen the the two two that if you hit uh, if you ascend it becomes a block wall and gets hexproof. Uh, I've yeah. seen that in the heroic decks. <laughs> okay. It's like oh cool big invisible stalker. <laughs> <laughs> big invisible stalker. And by big I mean he's a whole two two. <laughs> um, but no, uh, I, I mean I think like obviously we as you said Morgan we. we we're not going to have a full meta game yet, but the preliminary results say that like, you know, people are trying out all these cards, and people are also not trying out these cards, and modern looks good. So, yeah, and we'll we'll kind of have to wait and see what happens with uh, the these you know. Sort yeah, of the, the the so the hellscape I, I described was one of many possible futures. Many possible futures. <laughs> you remember that is yours. that that part in in T two where Sarah Connor is like gripping onto the the friends the fence, and then the the blast happens, and she's a skeleton. <laughs> That's like the darkest future. Well, so the hold on here though. Didn't the Judgment Day? Didn't Terminator? I, I, I mean, we don't talk about this one. But didn't Terminator <laughs> Three suggest that all the, the Langs like time actually can't be changed, like because no matter what Judgment Day was going to happen? Yeah. So uh, it's been a while I since I saw T Three. I don't know. Eat Arby's, I guess. <laughs> eat Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> all, all I can think of now is the the little the and then. But the world refused to change <laughs> as you get killed by Lavos in Chrono Trigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, but yeah, so um, we'll we'll keep an eye on this. We'll, we'll keep updating. Um, I, I think like this is a, a interesting way to sort of give this information to us um, because it it does take time to sort of actually get a clear picture of success sure but uh we won't really have another big modern tournament for uh a a little bit for quite some time that's just solely focused on modern so i mean we'll kind of have to wait and see what magic online says and kind of go from there but i think it's fine i think we'll be fine you could probably play for the most part whatever you want and still have success and jason blood raid will still be annoying but whatever they're just annoying cards what i heard there was you can play jason whatever deck you want yeah whatever whatever blue deck that you want you like um (laughs) Or Bloodbraid Elf. Again, I, I'm still considering building Ponza just because, like, it's a uh, fun for me deck, not a fun for anyone else deck, but fun for Morgan, me. Morgan, I, I thought I told you, you'll never win a tournament with that deck. That's fine. I don't have to win a tournament. I just have to make people. Uh, you just want to, like, I'm you just want to, like, Molten Rain somebody into, like, Blood Raided Stone Rain you in the next turn. Please. Yes. Yeah, it's, you're, you're a terrible person. It's it's, all, it's all, I'm, I would build it and I'd play Acidic Slime in it, even if it doesn't fit, <laughs> even if it doesn't make sense. I like one main deck with Acidic Slime. Yeah, there's a there's a, a list that we shared with our our friend uh, Keller that is playing Lotus Cobra and Acidic Slime, and Mystic Snake. Just uh, ha, just do it like that. How is that? How's that? There's no downside. <laughs> there's no downside to that except that maybe like the deck's bad, but I don't care. The deck's fun. 
So before we uh, jump into the wrap up, do you want to give a quick shout out to BCW Supplies? Um, they're actually running a promotion. You can find out some more information uh, via their Twitter. But you are getting you you can uh, get ten percent off all the uh, the stuff that you. Um, can order from their uh, from their website. Uh, so uh, check out the uh, BCW Supplies Twitter for uh, more information on the sale. I think it runs through the 22nd of February, if I'm not mistaken. So now is the the best time to get some awesome BCW stuff. And they have um, some some really cool uh, deck uh, cases. That I'm actually looking at they uh, they're the Commander series, but they're sort of smaller, more compact um, deck boxes. And um, so if you're like me and carry a, a smaller size bag around for magic tournaments these days it might actually work out a little bit better to have a uh, you know sort of a more compact uh, a box so uh, definitely check out uh, some of the stuff they have on bcw.com bcwsupplies.com excuse me and um you can follow uh, their facebook by doing a quick search for bcw supplies on facebook all right so wrap up uh, like we said we have gp memphis over the weekend it's going to be standard so uh we'll talk a little bit of standard next week uh, which will be uh we'll you know, be pretty cool. We, it, it's been a while, and it's it'll be nice to kind of revisit the uh, the scene after a, a larger tournament. So uh, that's probably what we're going to be focusing on for uh, next week. Um, and that's pretty much everything that's happening over the weekend. Um, so uh, before we uh, close out the show, uh, I do want to give a, a quick shout out to, of course, our uh, Twitter. It's uh, your N seven U. You do uh, uh, if you add us, it's at your N step, which obviously makes sense. Um, we also uh, have a Facebook page. Just do a quick search for at your N step on Facebook, and while you're there, check out our sponsors, Comic Town Gaming Center and uh, BCW Supplies. We uh, uh, also want to uh, you know encourage you uh to check out our patreon it's patreon.com slash at your up so if uh, you enjoy the show and uh, feel like becoming one of our patrons we uh certainly would appreciate it uh, uh our all of our patrons help us uh, uh bring the show to uh uh the people week in and week out and uh, we uh viewers like you we uh you know couldn't do it uh couldn't really do it with uh without your uh, support and help so we truly appreciate it uh, also, if you're listening to us via iTunes, feel free to leave us a rating or a review. It really helps with visibility and gets new listeners to the show. And um, if you're listening to us via MTG Cast, check out some of the awesome shows they have on that network. Uh, it's important that we also shout out something that's happening. Uh, is it this weekend? No, it's uh, Saturday or Sunday, February 25th. Saturday, February 25th. Sunday, Sunday February 25th. <laughs> uh, is the Riley... Uh, is this a sec- weekend? Am I crazy? Oh, it is this weekend. My apologies. So, Shoot, Sunday. This so this weekend, weekend this Sunday, uh, is the uh, Riley Oberhart, the second annual? Second annual. Riley Oberhart uh, Memorial Tournament. So uh, that's going to be held in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, so still pretty uh, local. And um, this is something that uh, you can find out more information by doing uh, a quick Facebook search for it. We could even uh, share it on our Facebook page as well, I believe. Uh, or find a, a link to it to, to some degree. Uh, so we can... Um, uh, get the word out for it. Um, it is important that you, if you are planning on attending, that you do take the time to pre-register. It's something that I really yeah, encourage they'd you really to do. Appreciate it. And um, all the uh, you know proceeds for it go to a uh, a good cause as well. Um, so definitely check out some more information about that tournament series uh, for that tournament on Facebook. Uh, but that's going to be everything for us this week. We do thank you so much for your time, and you have a great one. Bye.